Our first activity will be to set up a secure and segregated site boundary. Temporary fencing will be used whilst we install the permanent hoarding and deliver our initial welfare and office units, ready for the start of the construction activities on the project. We will install gates at our boundaries to safely access and egress the works and to maintain safe segregation of people and vehicles. We will maximise the use of one-way systems on the project to feed the Park Lane site from Beckwith Row and Carpenters Row and to Heaps Mill directly from Park Lane. During all times, we will employ dedicated traffic management and logistic personnel to our access points to ensure all roads are managed and controlled, thus minimising our impact to the local community. To fulfil our obligations for safe access and from our detailed understanding that the local roads coming into the project are restricted, we will review with Liverpool Council to suspend the parking bays on Upper Pownall Street and Shaw's Alley to the south of Heaps Mill. But be mindful that access to these roads will need to be maintained for local resident and business access needs. At our pedestrian access points, at Pownall Street for the Park Lane site and at Carpenters Row for the Heaps Mill blocks, we will use biometric scanners with turnstile access. As a consequence of the location, the restrictive access and the spread out nature of the building forms across the Heaps Mill and Park Lane sites, getting the material handling strategy correct and planned from the start will provide the most efficient solution for carrying out our lifting operations. To this, we will install the tower cranes as early as possible, progressively commencing on Park Lane, then installing across the Heaps Mill blocks. Once we have secured and set the site up, we will commence site clearance, excavation and structural fill works, then form the piling mat to prepare the site for piling activities. Works will be progressed from Park Lane Block A, working towards and through Park Lane Block B. On substantial progress of the piling mat, we will then commence the piling to Park Lane Block A, which will be CFA piled. This will reduce the vibration and noise of the works and thus any effect to the surrounding environment. For Park Lane, we will deploy two rigs with a further third rig added to commence on Heaps Mill Block A. As Park Lane piling progresses, the rigs deployed will move to support the rig on the Heaps Mill blocks. As the ground floor slabs are progressed across the development by block, the next element of works will be to safely hand over the site areas to our frame contractor to construct the superstructure, starting with construction of the core and vertical structural elements. With the restrictive nature of the site footprint, we will look to utilise both slip forming and jump formwork to the cores and with large tables utilised for horizontal slab elements. At present, we plan to slip park lane and heaps mill block A cores. All handling at this stage will be by the project tower cranes. Recognising crane hook time being valuable, we will also maximise the use of pumps and static lines as the works progress in height for concreting operations. Once the structural frame is up to the 6th floor, we will commence the external facade installations. The strategy for installation will be to install by floor level going horizontally across the buildings. Access strategy for installation will be via mass climbers to the external elevations and material distribution via goods hoists located to the external elevations of the building to access the floors and facades. The facade working operations will commence with bracketry fixed to the main structure, followed by aluminium framing works to form the facade lines. As these elements are fixed to position, panel installation and glazing will commence to seal the building. As the external elevation progresses across the elevations on each block and vertical as the floors rise, the internal works will commence to the floors, starting with first fix in terms of the mechanical and electrical services and main internal walling frame and boarding first side. 
we are currently proposing to use pods for the bathroom installation and from initial review of the current layouts in the stage one design, this can be accommodated. But we will work through this detail collaboratively with your team at the next stage. Internal fit-out contractors will work horizontally across the floors and work as teams to deliver a number of apartments per floor. As the upper floors are released, further teams will be deployed and move up the building to commence and deliver at the new floor levels. We will preload floors with material packs and utilise hoists for any further distribution which will reduce waste and maintain a clean, safe site. Our intention is to preload plasterboard, bathroom pods and main lengths of M&E first fix materials. Throughout the life cycle of the works on site, our team will use the last planner procedure in full collaboration with our engaged supply chain and other relevant stakeholders. This will be a key tool to drive the programme production and coordination of the fit-out works phase of the project. As the internal works near completion and facade works and access equipment have been removed, we will commence activities on the external works from the block elevations out to the site boundaries. During this stage, we will commence progressive removal of our temporary facilities on the project. <laughs>